Paris, 1832. In a small, dimly lit room, a young man writes as if racing against time. His ink-stained fingers tremble. Outside, the city murmurs with unrest, but inside these four walls, history is being rewritten, not with politics, not with swords, but with mathematics. Evariste Galois is just 20 years old. By sunrise, he will be dead. A duel awaits him, and he knows it. But before he goes, he leaves behind a mathematical riddle, one that will change the world. A secret coded in symbols, misunderstood in his time, yet destined to unlock the foundations of modern algebra. Galois was never an ordinary child. Born in 1811 in a politically charged France, he was raised on revolution. His father, a Republican mayor, believed in the power of words and ideas. His mother, a fiercely intelligent woman, taught him Greek and Latin before most children could even write their names. But mathematics? Mathematics was something else. It was his obsession, his language, his rebellion. By 15, he was devouring the works of Lagrange and Euler, not as a student, but as an equal. But the world wasn't ready for his genius. The French academic world was rigid, conservative. They demanded discipline, structure. Galois offered them chaos, brilliance and defiance. And for that, they shut their doors on him. Twice he applied to the prestigious École Polytechnique. Twice he was rejected. To them, he was incomprehensible. To him, they were fools. He didn't need their approval, only a chance to prove his ideas. But when that chance finally came, it slipped through his fingers. At just 17, Galois had already glimpsed something extraordinary, a way to describe the very structure of algebra itself. He sent his work to the legendary mathematician Augustin-Louis Cauchet, hoping for recognition. The response never came. His work, his proof, lost, a cruel accident or deliberate negligence. But Galois wasn't just a mathematical outsider. He was an agitator, a radical, a man who didn't fit into their polished, obedient world. His sharp tongue and impatience earned him enemies, not just in academia, but in politics. He didn't just challenge equations, he challenged authority. And that in 19th century France was dangerous. Mathematics and revolution. For Galois, they were one and the same. The academic world rejected him, the government feared him, and soon both would conspire to bring him down, and then came the duel. The duel that ended his life, but not his legacy, because what he left behind would change mathematics forever. Evariste Galois stands on the edge of history and the end of his life. A pistol in his hand, death just a trigger pull away. But how did he get here? Why does a young mathematical genius face death at sunrise? To understand, we must go back to the battles he fought, not with weapons, but with ideas. For Galois, mathematics wasn't just a discipline, it was a revolution. He had uncovered something extraordinary, something that could rewrite the rules of algebra itself. But the academic elite weren't ready for him. His ideas were too radical, his methods too unconventional. He saw structure where others saw chaos. He described symmetry not as beauty, but as power. He had glimpsed the hidden laws governing equations, but no one would listen. Twice he submitted his revolutionary work. Twice it was rejected. The first lost in bureaucracy, the second dismissed by the great Poisson, who simply said, neither clear nor sufficient. Words that crushed his chances, but not his resolve. Galois was no stranger to rejection, and if academia would not have him, he would fight another way. His passion for mathematics was matched only by his passion for revolution. He became a voice for the radicals, a firebrand against tyranny, but in doing so, he made powerful enemies. In 1831, he raised a toast to the death of the king. It was enough. The next morning he was arrested, three times he was thrown into prison, three times he emerged more defiant than before, but time was running out, and soon mathematics 
would be the only battle he had left to fight. They had silenced him in the classroom, they had locked him in a cell, but they could not take away his mind. And in his final days, as the walls closed in, Galois poured everything he had left onto the page. This was his true rebellion, a theory that would unravel the deepest mysteries of algebra, the birth of what we now call group theory. At its core, his idea was simple yet profound. Equations were not just numbers, they had hidden symmetries, patterns, deep structures. And through these, he could determine when an equation had a solution, and when it did not. His work would go on to revolutionize fields from cryptography to quantum mechanics. But in 1832, none of that mattered, because Galois knew his time was up, a woman, a betrayal, a challenge to a duel. The details remain a mystery. Was it a lover's quarrel, a political trap? No one knows for sure. But what we do know is that Galois accepted May 30th, 1832. The duel that would silence a genius, a bullet to the gut. He would not survive the night, and with those words, he was gone. But he was right. His work would not be lost. It would be understood. And it would change the world. For years, his work lay buried in the archives of history, a collection of scribbled notes, misunderstood equations, the final testament of a young man who died too soon. But today, we know the truth. What Galois left behind was not just a set of ideas, it was a blueprint for the future of mathematics. His work would come to define entire fields of study, from algebra to cryptography, from quantum physics to the fundamental structures of reality itself. This is Galois's greatest gift to the world. At the heart of Galois's work was a revolutionary question. What makes an equation solvable? Why do some equations have simple solutions while others seem impossible to crack? For centuries, mathematicians had solved equations using formulas. But as they reached higher degrees, third, fourth, fifth, they hit a wall. No formula worked beyond a certain point. The reason? Hidden symmetries. Galois saw what no one else could see. Equations weren't just numbers, they were structures. And these structures had deep, underlying symmetries. If you could understand the symmetry, you could understand the equation itself. This was the birth of group theory, a way to classify and understand the hidden transformations governing numbers, geometry, even the fundamental laws of physics. And today, this discovery is everywhere. Galois's mathematics isn't just theory, it's the foundation of modern cryptography, the algorithms that protect every digital transaction you make. From banking to cybersecurity, his ideas guard our secrets in an age of information. Every time you send a message, buy something online, or access secure data, you are using principles born from Galois's final desperate night of work. And it doesn't stop there. In the cutting-edge world of quantum computing, Galois' theories help define how we understand particles, waves, and even the fabric of reality itself. Even the very laws that govern the universe, electromagnetism, relativity, quantum mechanics, are shaped by the group structures he first described. From the tiniest particle to the vast motions of the cosmos, his mathematics is woven into the fabric of existence. For decades, his work remained in obscurity. He died believing he had been forgotten. But today, his name stands among the greatest minds in history. Today, the greatest mathematical discoveries still build upon his ideas. The Fields Medal, the highest honor in mathematics, often rewards breakthroughs in theories rooted in Galois' work. What was once dismissed, misunderstood, ignored, is now a cornerstone of modern mathematics. And so, the boy who died in obscurity lives on, in equations, in science, in every unsolved problem that dares the next generation to see what others cannot. The revolution he started never ended. It only waits for the next mind to pick up where he left off. On the morning of May 31st, 1832, Évariste Galois took his last breath. He was just 20 years old, shot, betrayed, abandoned. His final words to his brother, a whisper of defiance, a brilliant mind snuffed out before the world even understood what it had lost. But death could not silence his ideas. 
In time, the world would come to see the truth. Eleven years after Galois's death, a mathematician named Joseph Louville made a discovery. Among the forgotten manuscripts, he found something extraordinary, Galois's final letter. A letter that contained the future of mathematics, line after line of brilliance, hidden symmetries, a new language of algebra, the foundation of what we now call Galois theory. For decades, his work had been ignored, misunderstood, but now the world was finally ready. One by one, the greatest minds of the 19th and 20th centuries would build upon his insights, turning a lost manuscript into a mathematical revolution. Yet even as his ideas took flight, the man himself was nearly forgotten. No grand funeral, no statue in his honor. His grave, unmarked, tucked away in a quiet corner of Paris. But if his name was forgotten in stone, it was immortalized in equations. Today, Galois theory is a cornerstone of modern mathematics. His work lives on, not in monuments, but in the minds of every mathematician who dares to see beyond the obvious. His discoveries are not relics of the past, they are the foundation of our future. From the encryption that protects your online banking to the quantum physics shaping our understanding of the universe, Galois' fingerprints are everywhere. Every time a scientist deciphers a fundamental law of nature, they walk in his footsteps. His mathematics does not belong to the past, it belongs to the future. Evariste Galois died believing the world had abandoned him. But what he left behind was greater than he could have ever imagined. Somewhere, right now, a young mind is discovering his work for the first time. A spark of understanding, a flash of insight. And maybe, just maybe, Lila, the next revolution in mathematics is about to begin. Because the greatest minds are never truly lost. They live on in the ideas that change the world.